welcome to the Chef's Pantry. I am your host, Anna Rossi. I just gave away my secret. I've got a chicken beauty that is ready for us later. And I hope you came hungry. Okay, I got it. I'm on it. Um, I hope you're hungry because this is a feast. We are with Chef Robert Harris today. And this, this is everything that we like about the Chef's Pantry today. Chef Robert Harris has worked for some of the biggest names in Boston, like Olives, Rialto, East Coast Grill. And now he is so fluid in the food space with an amazing restaurant season to taste that it has evolved over the last year, uh, doing catering, doing family dinners, all sorts of amazing food stories that he brings to the table with his Southern roots, New England sensibility, and a beautiful home kitchen. So we're excited to go to see him now and get a bite of some really delicious food. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Chef. How are, How are you? you? I, I'm doing great. I'm just glad to be here. My chicken is talking to me. I heard <laughs> that. Saying, yeah. how's, how's it looking? Did you take a peek there? It's looking too good not to share. I'm so excited. So I, it's really special being with you today because I just have loved following what Season to Taste has done, especially over this last year. Tell yeah. us a little bit about where you are physically right now and what's going on with your restaurant portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm, this is my home kitchen. I'm in uh, Porter Square in Cambridge, not far from uh, the restaurant Season to Taste. Um, if about a year and a half ago, or I guess in February of last year, um, I had a, a, a very, you know, successful catering company and also the, the table restaurant and, uh, March 13th, uh, that was the day kind of everything changed. We closed for a couple of weeks and then we came back and we realized, um, you know, fine dining was going to be challenging. Catering absolutely evaporated. Of course, no one's hiring anyone to do any parties or anything. So uh, it was all about, you know, the pivot and survival. Uh, so we launched Season to Go, and Season to Go was kind of our, our takeout brand where, uh, and, and it was kind of cool, like my chef, uh, uh, Mark uh, Thompson, um, we kind of rang each other up after two weeks in quarantine, and we we're like, we're going crazy, let's do something. So we went into this catering kitchen and just turned it into an all minute kitchen pretty much, um, you know, overnight, and just threw everything up on Grubhub and DoorDash and, and started doing takeout. And that kind of grew, and we did that for about three or four months. Uh, and then the restaurant, uh, they allowed uh, outdoor dining. So uh, out on Mass Ave, which is it's not the, the most handsome uh, area of Mass Ave, but we, we built these kind of semi-private cabanas. And in, in the cabanas, we started doing kind of more refined, kind of nicer, but still very casual, fun um, uh, food. And we did that for a period of time, and then they opened up indoor dining. We built indoor cabanas with... Uh, with uh, semi-private, um, you know, curtains and HEPA filters, and uh, and we we've, we've been surviving. It's it's been going strong. You know, it really depends on the weather a lot of times with outdoor dining, and and then of course we had the surge to deal with over, over the holidays. But uh, now every day that it's above 40, 50 degrees, we're very busy. Um, the other piece of the business, the catering side, um, my thought is that probably won't come back until the fall when, when everyone's kind of uh, vaccinated and everything. So, you know, our focus now is just the takeout, season to go, the restaurant. And then we've also launched this really cool thing called family dinner, which is essentially you order uh, a meal that's completely cooked. We make it fresh in the morning. You pick it up and you heat it up within uh, 20 minutes in a 425 degree oven. And, uh, and, and then after you're saying, Chef, like with the catering component, like big events have come yes. to a halt, but yes. the style that you prepare food for catering is yes. so delicious when you're thinking of to-go food. So yes. we we have a family-style chicken dish with yes. tabbouleh and sitar and sweet, sticky honey yes. that we're going to be building together that would be something that you would find in family dinner, right? That's right. That's right. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is we love roast chicken. It's kind of the most humble, yet also uh, delicious vehicle. And was, there's so many different cultures have roast chicken as part of what they do. Yeah, there's the chicken right there. And uh, so this take on it, every week that we do family dinner, um, we, we, we highlight kind of a different, you know, uh, origin or culture. You know, I've got a barbecue one from you know, my southern roots. And then this one's really inspired by, um, you know, when I worked with uh, Ana Sautern, um back in yeah. the, at Casablanca, actually, before she opened uh, Oleana. And, and you know, I, I got to learn about the Middle Eastern spices and, and Savan Bakery in Watertown. And so um, Chef Mark and I kind of just put together this, this, this dish with the chicken. 
Um, we can kind of get going if you want. You know, it, it's 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 uh, we, it's a lot of work to do this uh, to do to make the chicken extraordinary, but it's uh, we think it's really well worth it. Well, let's do it. So it starts off with a brine, and don't just save brining for Turkey Day, right? This is exactly. this is the secret to locking in juice, a nice level of salinity. What are the flavors yeah. that you put in? So um, with the brine, the reason why we brine, right, is because uh, of the laws of osmosis and diffusion. Areas of greater concentration always want to go to lesser areas of concentration. So if you take a liquid and you put salt and sugar in and other flavorings, all that liquid uh, diffuses into the bird. And the reason why we do that is because um, uh, it, it, it makes it kind of really hard to overcook. It keeps it really nice and moist. And also the, the salt helps to get kind of the, the proteins the nature to the chicken so that it, it, it just cooks a little bit more efficiently. So for the brine, it's really straightforward. It's, it's, we've got a salt and then we've got a sugar. And then with the Middle Eastern spices, right? Uh, we've got some turmeric for a little bit of color. Mm, here. Nice. And then uh, also this is whole coriander, black pepper uh, and clove. That, that goes right in. Uh, and then we've got a little citrus, uh, you know, just get a little bit of, of that going. Um, have a bounce off the acidity and some brightness. And the last thing is just kind of the classic bay leaves and, and thyme. So this goes into a, a, a pot of boiling water and you let it simmer till it all stirs and comes together. And then we shock it. We add, uh, this is about two liters of water. We add about a liter of ice and that cools it down. Great. So once that's done, You've got your brine ready to go. We then have our chicken, which is this guy right here. And your chicken's uh, a lot bigger than my chicken. What's what's going on with that chicken? I know. I think it's like a, a modern day chicken. I, it's Bell and Evans air chilled, oh, but nice. I tried to get one without the brine. Usually, I'll buy a brined bird, right. but I really like that it goes beyond the sugar and the salt with the co the clove and the coriander and. Yes. It's like, tweaking how you want it to taste. I also love, you can see this was in only for about four hours, but it has yeah. like some nice like golden notes that are starting to pop fatty. up yeah. on like the fatty parts of the skin. Yeah, exactly. And you know, once it's in the brine, which um, basically I'm, I'll transition over to, to uh, so, okay. So we brine it for six hours. We then take it out and we put it uh, in the walk-in so that it, it dries. And the drying process helps the skin get really nice and crispy. Um, and and then we tie the chicken and then we roast it. So I was just and if you don't go have a walk-in, if you're not lucky oh. enough, I yeah. do, um, I put mine on a baking sheet over a rack. And so oh. I get like some airflow around exactly. it. And then the texture of the skin is nice and dry and it can really help crisp up, right? When it goes exactly. in the oven. Exactly. And then, and now we're at the stage where um, the bird has dried overnight and I kind of left, you know, this, this is a, a geo known bird, which is uh, a really nice, it's, it's uh, uh, more of a heritage breed. You can see that the breast is kind of elongated. It's, it's it not like kind of your classic one. And so um, the steps for, for um, tying it is, well, essentially what we want to do is we want to dress it with, um, with our ingredients and then tie it. So um, okay. first of all, dressing it, what I like to do is just put, uh, just a little bit of uh, oil on it, and this is going to help conduct all the heat and everything. And then um, it gets uh, seasoned with uh, salt. And then it's really important that you season inside the chicken as well, because um, that gives you access to kind of the, you know, makes it more consistent, uh, nice and, and salty all around season. And so we season the bird all around, generous amounts of uh, kosher salt. Nice. And then, we're using za'atar, which is, za'atar is a, a Middle Eastern spice blend that consists of sumac, um, dried oregano, sometimes dried parsley, and sesame seeds. Mm. Um, this is kind of our, our, our house blend that we make ourselves. And we also put a little bit of cracked uh, coriander in, in there as well. Um, oh. And so th that gets sprinkled all over the bird again, just to kind of give it a really nice flavor. And, um, sumac is a uh, is kind of a really cool. It grows wild wild um, in New England. You can harvest it when it's in season. It's this beautiful um, like purple flower that is in you then dehydrate and dry, and then it, it has this really cool like lemon flavor to it. Um, but it's also a staple in, in the Middle Eastern cuisine. So yeah. just giving it just a bunch of zatar everywhere, 
And uh, how are you, Anna? Where, where are you on, on, on your on your bird? That's yes. great. She is oiled and salted and seasoned. Okay, great. So, um, in terms of tying or trussing, yes. how, how much butcher's twine do you like to haul off? You know, I, I, let's just say about three feet or so, enough to go around the bird. You know, I mean, okay. the main reason why you do the truss, the chicken is because it's, as you can see, it's a kind of uh, all over in its, its shape. And you're trying to form it into kind of this cohesive ball that, so that it'll look, uh, cook much more consistently. Now, there's lots of different ways to tie a chicken. This is how I was taught at um, CIA, you know, the College of America, when I went there 20 years ago. Um, essentially, what, what I do is there's this little uh, kind of knob on the end there, the tail, and I just kind of hook the, the string around the tail, just like so, and okay. then I'll cross over like that. Great. Okay. And then we go around the leg. From under, from over, over the top and under. Yep. So, okay. so basically, I don't know if you if you can see that. Okay. Yeah. Like, and oh, then pull it, pull it uh, cr cross the string and pull it tight. Exactly. You're just going around the leg like that, and then you're taking the string. And one thing also, I don't know if I told you to tuck the wings under like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to tuck the wings under. And then at this point, you're just kind of going under on this side and on this side. And this is when I realized my string is too short. <laughs> <laughs> I think I measured mine the same length. Okay, but then this is where you tie it off. Yeah. Here, let me, let me uh, I'm, I'm gonna just shorten a little bit here. Okay. So it, can get it gets tied, in fact, at the top. Exactly, it goes, well, yeah, it goes around the bird. And you could use this technique also if you have stuffed your bird with herbs and citrus and garlic. Yes, of course. Yeah. Great. See, there we go. See now it's uh, then you just do a, a, a single tile like that. And then um, my meat instructor at school always said you do once, uh, twice, <laughs> three times a ladies. That's a, <laughs> to my age, it's an old Kenny Rogers. Had a, 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 I knew that song was useful in the kitchen. Yeah, and you know he had a uh, an actual Kenny Rogers roasters. He had a, a roast chicken place for a while. I don't know if you know that. So, <laughs> so that that's our that's the bird. It's all tied up and ready to go, seasoned. And then uh, let's rinse off my hands really quickly. Yeah, get get the chicken coops. So, and uh, this is a little trick that uh, you want to make sure that you. Uh, you want to have the chicken so that the, the, the heat has access to kind of square on the chicken. So I, I take a piece of foil just kind of like this and roll it into a strip like this and then we pour a little donut like this. Okay. And now, if you have a rotisserie or, you know, something cool, that's awesome as well. But uh, most people don't. So this is just a way, again, we've got our nice tight bird. It, it rests right on top of this foil forms a little nest here and that allows the heat to access the whole chicken that's that's so great i love uh, the oysters i call them the oysters on the underbelly and oh, yeah. otherwise it just ends up getting so soggy sitting in its own juices yes. basically oh yeah we're gonna pull the oysters out when we cut it up for sure that's that's the secret though i don't i i eat the oyster i don't i don't share it with anyone else i no no oh, that's the chef's right right yeah that's right they say that the, the the king used to just eat the oyster from the chicken and give the rest to the to the court. So, um, so okay. So there's my bird ready to go. It's it's nested uh, in, in the little foil. It's it's uh it's all seasoned up and that's going to go right in the oven. Into a really hot oven. You're you're talking about 425 here. Yes, exactly. So the thing is, um, with with any bird, it's all about uh, the skin and it being bubbly and crispy and golden brown and uh, so the best way to do that especially with a bird kind of this size and also the one you have is you want to go into a really hot oven like 425 degrees um, yeah. and I, I fortunately have a convection oven in my house um, ideally if you have a convection oven it allows you to, um, to, to like just get it nice and crispy all around um, for Thanksgiving actually when I do a turkey I'll put it in like a 425 450 degree oven 
at, at, for the first 15 minutes because you're kind of oven searing it and then you're turning it down to like 375, 350 to let it slowly roast. But this, this chicken with a 425 degree oven, I mean, how, how long was yours? Uh, how long did it go for? About about 35 minutes. I haven't done a temperature check yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you, you, you're in Cambridge. You have some great uh, spice sources. Yes. Max is asking, she had a recipe that called for Zatar. Yes. Where do you like to go for your spices? Well, you know, of course, you can always order online, which I like to support local economy. So um, Curio Spice uh, in, in not far from the shop is, is a great option. Um, and then also, uh, as I mentioned, Savon and Watertown, they've got a bunch of awesome uh, Middle Eastern spices. Um, they're uh, uh, Armenian from Lebanon originally. Uh, their, their family came here, um, you know, 30, 40 years ago. They opened the shop and everything's really good there. Um, then there's Penske Spice in Arlington, uh, which you can also order online. Um, and then you, I've seen it actually at, at, um, at, Am at, well, I'll call it Amazon, at Whole Foods. <laughs> uh, and days. Trader Joe's sometimes has it also. Yes, yeah. So, um, so the, bird's, the bird's in the oven. Um, it's, you know, going nice and hot. And um, at this point, I think we'll start working on, on the, the other components. We've got uh, uh, the tahini sauce. And then we've also got um, uh, the uh, tabbouleh as well. So do you want to? Should we whip up the tahini? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that next. And this is like a, a dressing, basically, um, to pack in as much flavor as possible. I love you have the tahini, which is basically just ground sesame seed, roasted sesame seed, some garlic, some coriander, some cumin, a little lemon juice, and some water. That's it. Yeah. So tahini is uh, is exactly that. It's it's the ground sesame. Um, uh, there's different uh, levels of tahini. I'm see if I can find the one that I use. It's the one that's it's it's like in a plastic um, looks like a mayo jar. There's the one that's in the in the um, uh, in the tin, and that's that's decent. But um, I, I prefer this this other this other one, which again you can get at Savan. And I uh, I found this, mine at Trader Joe's. And so yeah, there you go. Tahini yeah, that's to a little bit bitter. Um, so I like it when it's smooth and it's nutty, but it's not. Um, it, it, it sometimes it can have a little bit of a stronger aftertaste. Yeah, exactly. So what I've done is um, I've, I've got the tahini here. I added a little bit of uh, water and lime juice. We've got uh, some salt and as well as cumin, a little bit of coriander, and then um, some uh, just grated on a microplane garlic. Just kind of dried up a little bit here. Great, and I I like how you're grating it, so it's super fine, and it's almost like um, a mush in there. It incorporates really well. Exactly, and and so um, as you can see, I'm just whipping it. In the restaurant, when we make a big batch of it, we do it in a roboco. But you know, for this, I think it's fine, and you'll see how it's kind of coming together, and and you know, getting a little creamier and thicker. And it's got a really nice sauce consistency. It's super simple. It's vegan, and it's delicious on basically everything. So that's our tahini sauce. We got that. We'll just let that guy hang out over here, Great. and dash this stuff away. I I I get it. Like I I so I really like your flavors. Like you have the southern roots. You have yeah. the New England seasonal. Um, so, like vein that goes through your cooking, and I also like feel there's a little autolungi. Like I get that on a sort of turn, like th this global influence. Yes, um, it's really cool how you bring it together. Yeah, you know, um, the idea is that we want to kind of look to see what's seasonal. You know, what's coming in fresh from the farms. That's step number one. I always view when I'm menu planning is the first thing is is what are the best ingredients, and once we determine that, then we go to technique. And then technique um, can come from all over the world. And while you know, in this recipe we are kind of cheating. It's it's we're not getting fresh local tomatoes or cucumbers. Um, I did want to. We, it's still going to be delicious, and we're still kind of you know working with with that. Um, just because I really wanted that Middle Eastern flavor. Um, so mm. great. Oh, uh, that's delicious. Oh yeah, let's give it a taste. So I use lemon. You use lime. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, lemon. I did use lemon. I, it's so good that That's like great. nuttiness. Yeah, I I could see. Yes, this would be good on everything. Nice, <laughs> nice. In the fridge. Okay, should we? What do you think? Make the tabbouleh? 
yeah, let's do that. And then um, also just um, to, to sneak ahead, I've got a pot here um, of salted water, and that's going to be for the asparagus. And so, so I have a whole little bundle of asparagus. Should I go ahead and trim the ends? Yeah, the, the ends can be kind of woody. Um, and so, you know, asparagus, it, I kind of call it this kind of crescent of asparagus. Uh, right now, uh, this asparagus is from uh, California. And then as uh, as the season progresses, then we get it from Jersey, we get it locally. Um, the, it, there's a very famous Hadley grass, they call it, which is uh, from Western Mass. And then it ends in Canada. And then by the time you get to, um, you know, into the, the heat of the summer, asparagus is gone. So. Uh, we're cheating a little bit by getting it from California right now, but that's the thing is that, that we try to be so orthodox with the, the seasonal component um, because everyone's expecting, you know, fava beans and asparagus and English peas, but we really don't get those locally until like early June, late May. Right. So we're cheating a little bit there. Um, but at any rate, just wanted to get the water going on that. Oh, you, you're going right in there. Anna. Great. I'm I just put them right in, and this is a really fast cook, so they stay yeah. that bright green. We're looking at about two minutes. Exactly. And, my, yeah. and mine are mine are thin, thin little asparagus. My exactly. asparagus, the, the tag said hippie asparagus, so I'm excited. To taste uh, it. You know, two minutes is, it should do it. What I always recommend is that you, you know, you put it in for a minute or two, and then you, you pull it out, and if you want to dunk it in cold water, and then see it burn your mouth, and then taste it. Um, and then, you know, with asparagus, if you're able to cook it, it starts to fall apart and, and it gets colored. And the thing is, with green vegetable cookery, you always want a really boiling uh, a pot of water. You want to cook it as fast as possible just because the longer you cook it, the chlorophyll leaches out. And that be beautiful, bright green leaches out. And then you might as well just make soup with it. So let's, um, what do you think? Should we go for the, ta the tabbouleh yeah. salad? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So uh, with the tabbouleh, so essentially, I've got some nice vulgar uh, wheat here that's that's been you know uh, steamed. It, it cooks basically like couscous, and it has this kind of really like nutty flavor. That's just going to go right in the bowl, like so. And then we've got uh, cucumbers and tomatoes. I mean, these obviously they're not beautiful, lovely local tomatoes, unfortunately, but. They're uh, the, the little uh, the, the cherry tomatoes that you, that you can get in the store. And then <clears throat> the English cucumbers are pretty consistently good um, year round. So it's English cucumbers and it's tomatoes. And then um, we've got a nice bunch of parsley. Uh, we like to add also some mint in there and a little bit of oregano just, just to give it, you know, kind of a slightly different flavor that goes in. And then uh, we've got a mix of garlic and lemon. Uh, lemon juice and that goes in and then this is just some real nice olive oil mm. the olive oil goes in and it all gets dressed now this is like super awesome spring dish super light super healthy uh, this is such a satisfying side or even a main for a lot of different dishes <laughs> like you could do like a poached white fish with this oh yeah uh, it it's a yummy lunch on its own i love serving it with hummus and like doing like pocket styles but i i love your honey and, and the herbs that you're t tossing in beyond the parsley yeah really it's, nice. it's, yeah i mean the classic one it tends to be just like tomato um parsley bulgur wheat but i we like to kind of make a little more complex add a little more flavor in there yeah and then I see you're giving it a yeah, little taste. taste. How does it taste? Um, it should. It needs some salt, though. So not not to make a pun, but it needs to be seasoned, seasoned to taste. So, <laughs> so we do a little, a little kosher salt to kind of get, get to where it needs to be. Great. I want to make sure I didn't, after I tasted it, I didn't double dip the spoon because my wife would kill me. Oh. <laughs> well, you are in your home kitchen. That's so. true. I, um, yeah, she, I, that's what I tell her. She doesn't. She's she's against that. <laughs> Hopefully, she'll appreciate the, the oh, gourmet yeah. dinner. Okay, so I'm tossing uh, in a little bit of the kosher salt. Yeah, here. Make, make, make sure you season the taste. Um. So yeah, so then we've got. Mm. Wow. Oh, that's great. Uh, so I purple garlic at the grocery store and it 
Purple it's garlic? Crazy. Cool. Oh, yeah, garlic can give it a punch. So then, okay. yeah, uh, you already kind of jumped on the asparagus, but, um, <clears throat> you know, they're just nice oil and salted water. Um, just to be generous, I'll do a couple bunches here. <clears throat> and yeah, this, this will go for two minutes. Great. Uh, roughly. And so we're kind of getting a little bit of stuff together here. We got our tabbouleh, we got our tahini. So it's, yeah, it's looking really good. That I have the blanched asparagus, the tahini dressing, the tabbouleh salad, and then we're going to finish it off with a little feta crumble. That's right. So yeah, I'm just going to uh, jump in and uh, pull that chicken out. Take a look at that. Oh. Yeah, so um, with the magic of television, uh, we already, I kind of uh, went ahead and roasted uh, another bird, so we're ready to go. And this is, this is what she looks like. Here we go. Oh, what a beautiful bird! There we go. There we go. So um, now, how can you tell it's done? Mine's a little darker. Oh. That's okay, though. That's fine. Okay. I'm into it. Okay. So... What you want to do is uh, take take a thermometer, yep, and then I, I try to put it right in near the thigh, where the thigh meets the kind of the bird, and this should read 165 degrees. Okay. Once it hits 165, you're good. Take it out. Now, one thing that's really important is that you let it rest. Uh, you want to let the bird rest for 10 minutes, just let because as it comes out of the oven, it's you know, wound up and then it just kind of relaxes and it helps prevent, you know, kind of when you cut it, it all the juice is running. And, yeah. Uh, the main thing, you know, like I said, with the, sorry, just coming up, that's very, the main thing with, with the bird always is, uh, the bird is the crispy skin, having a really nice crispy skin, uh, but you also don't want to overcook it and have it be dry. So. Right. So mine is reading 130 and I took mine out. It's uh -oh. been resting. It's been resting like 20 minutes. Uh oh. So, yeah, I think uh, so. It should be. You want to go for 165. It might be a little under. But what you can do? It might be a little bit under. <clears throat> I would put it back in the oven, at because it's already got that nice dark color on there. Uh, and and just drop it, the temperature. Yeah, I would put because you're. I think the the miscalculation is that the bird you have is a bit bigger than mine. So um, I would put it. Uh, you know, for about another 15 minutes, just set a timer. Okay. Um, and we kind of work with mine from, you know, as far as farming it goes. So here's our, here's our chicken. And uh, one ingredient that we didn't really talk about, uh, we didn't make together is uh, I've got this really nice uh, French feta that I've added uh, mint and parsley and chives to and a little bit of olive oil. Ooh. So right now what we've got is Got these guys all together. We've got the chicken. We've got our asparagus. We have our tahini. And um, oh, yes, when you pull the bird out, this is one thing you want to talk about. It's it's the honey and sumac glaze. So this is just a little bit of honey uh, with some sumac. And uh, essentially, you want to just brush it on the bird, give it a real nice glisten. Uh, if you don't have enough color on your bird, then you can take it out, you know, um, when it's about 145 and glaze it and then put it back. But I, I find this works as well. It, it imparts the flavor there and uh, just gives us real nice. It's just, it's essentially sumac and honey and a little bit of water all mixed together. Oh, that's uh, so great. It's beautiful for the color and then also that texture. I love things that are sweet and salty. Yeah. So. Uh, last piece here, getting this, we just take the string off, talked about, uh, and then we don't want to eat that. And then I'm, I'm going to plate this right on this board. I think it's cool. You know, one of the things we do with the catering company for backyard parties is, uh, we call it a chef's board and we, we, it's one that's about three times bigger than this. And we do these really cool displays. Um, but to cut up the chicken, what I like to do is, uh, I'll first unfold the wings and just take the, the, the drumstick off now. What's cool is if you, if you have um, a pot, you can um, throw these the, the scraps in, and then you can make a little stock with it. Very nice. That's you don't want to waste any part of the animal. So we got our, our wings. I take the, those off, and then uh, just going to go down the middle first, right? 
like right down the middle, uh, right where the two breasts meet. We'll give that a cut with a nice sharp knife. And then you've got kind of the, the spine running through there. You want to go on one side, just straight down again with your knife. Oh, you know what? I forgot to pull the oysters off. Trouble. They're, they're still kind of there. They're, they're right there. Good, good thing you're serving that in-house tonight. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Okay, so that's kind of the back. I'm gonna, uh, there are two halves, and so we'll just cut the thigh off, just like so. Okay, and then we just want to break this into eight pieces. So you've got the thigh and the leg, and we're just going to do a cut right there. And there's that. Rest in half so everyone can kind of share some of the white meat if they'd like. So, and do the same thing with the other half. And, and this will what make one, two, six, two, four, six pieces? Uh, or well, do you cut the breast eight. In that half? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because you cut the breast in half. You cut the breast in half. Yes. Yeah, exactly. okay. So, um, give a wash of hands. And now I'm just going to go ahead and plate this. So here we go. Love, love a good board food. A good yeah, board. So food. Let's pull the board as you can just kind of spread it all out. I'm just going to do a little bit of a, this guy over here, a little bit of a, a crescent kind of shape with the tabbouleh. Mm. Yeah, we call this uh, chef's board service and it, it's, Kind of, um, we were doing it in the fall um, for really small, you know, like people who are in their own bubble, you know, 12 person parties. And um, we're thinking about bringing it back in the spring just because it's so dramatic and looks so cool. Yeah, I just, I love that rustic farm to table, farm chic kind of style of yeah. not only cooking, but pre presenting. Oh, that's so beautiful. Look yeah, at that. So Let me know like that. Just, you know, assorted pieces just like so, right? And save the wing, the two wings for the lucky people who do that. And then we've got our asparagus. And with asparagus, I just want to dress it. You could do a squeeze of lemon on here, but we've already got so much kind of lemon going on. I just have some really nice, one of my indispensable ingredients is some nice uh, extra virgin olive oil. Great. And then also just, of course, a season of taste, a little bit of salt. And so this, these, We'll just arrange kind of in front here. You, if you want to get really pedantic about it, you can have all the, the spears go in the same direction. But this is home cooking after all. Like so. There we go. That looks like a, a harvest. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so then the last two pieces are the tahini and then the herb, the herb feta. And so the tahini, I like to just put a little on the side. I have a little side container for folks who want to. What, well, like, so someone can take a little spoon and control yeah. how much they season to taste? Y yes. And then if, if you want, um, put a little bit of sauce on the bird. I think that's a good idea too. Just a little, just a little drizzle on top. A little drizzle. Like so, using our little chef paintbrush. Oh, nice. There we go. And it has that cool pasty sort of texture to it, which is such a nice contrast to the sticky honey. Yes, exactly. And then the last piece is, is just the, the herbed, um, herb feta, which I think is cool. Just kind of, you just want to get a little, put that in the little valleys of present. I don't want to get Bob Ross on you, but a little happy valleys right here. <laughs> he's he's so. totally vogue again, Robert. I, <laughs> I, I, I know. It's amazing. Like, I find if I can't sleep at night, I'll just put him on Netflix and I'm out. Like, but not, <laughs> that's not in the pejorative at all. I, I think it's amazing. Yeah. he. There was something universal, I think, to his style of artistry, right? Yeah. I mean, he, um, I like to buy a Bob Ross painting. I think they're like, thousands of dollars now <laughs> well you have that beautiful spot right above your your sink with your two little corgis portrait oh yeah this of course the 
we've got uh, Watson and Moxie. They're uh, kind of our our local uh, royalty. <laughs> Corgis. Okay. So I'm like ten minutes behind you because of because of my big bird, but I'll have to report back when okay. all is said and done. Well, there but we look, go. I have I have tried to present on up up to the point minus the chicken. So the tahini and the tabbouleh and the asparagus, yeah. and then to lay in the chicken, nice. like you've done so beautifully. Look at that. That is yeah. board food right Jeff there. Moore, right there. That's one happy, uh, I mean, I guess I would feed like three people, four people. <laughs> you know? Four lucky people. Perfect yes. Perfect for your family. I hope your daughter and wife appreciate it this evening and, awesome. and awesome. your cute little corgis. Yes. Robert, I love, love all that you bring to the table, how you season to taste. It's just so fantastic. And we're so awesome. lucky to have you locally. Thank you so much. Thank I feel you. spoiled tonight. I may have done it myself, but with your helping hand, this is fantastic. And awesome. best of luck with family dinners. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And it was great cooking with you. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure. We'll see you soon. This is so fantastic. And I love that you can get the recipe. It's Every detail is up on Facebook. And Robert is so meticulous in how he's measured out the grams. So if you just follow it, you can create a five-star dining experience in your home. Or guess what? You can just order his food online. It's that easy also. Thank you so much for participating today and cooking with us. I hope this inspired you to make something tasty. It's spring and there's delicious food in the markets. And we can't wait to be back with you next Monday. And in the meantime, we have other digital programs like Mom to Mom. And we have uh, the Hub Today and the Hub Today Weekend during the weekend weekend. And eat well and tag us, the Chef's Pantry. We'll see you soon. I got to get this chicken cooked to perfection. I'm going to report back, okay?